Welcome back to Point of Love, keeping well. So I've got like I promised earlier on, I will share a video that would actually entail the information from I-24. I didn't say I-24 previously, but I-24 is the Israeli channel, um, international 24-hour news channel. Look at in Jaffa Port Tel Aviv in Israel. Um, they have um, given the news regarding um, gas in Gaza before this conflict has started. Uh, let's have a look at that first. And uh, once we're actually done with that, we'll go to Reuters as well. So let's start with I-24 first. The gas field, which sits just about 30 kilometers off the Gazan coast, is estimated to hold more than one trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Discovered over 20 years ago, the gas has remained untouched due to the ongoing conflict between Israel and the Palestinian enclave. But now, with the West looking for alternative energy sources after distancing itself from Russia following the invasion of Ukraine, all parties involved are willing to make new strides. In a statement earlier this morning, the Israeli Prime Minister's office citing economic reasons for the move. In the framework of the existing efforts between the State of Israel, Egypt and the Palestinian Authority, with emphasis on Palestinian economic development and maintaining security stability in the region, it has been decided to develop the Gaza Marine gas field off the coast of Gaza. So as you've seen, Nari 24 channel, we talked about gas before the conflict has even started. So now we're going to reach us as well, reconfirm the very same thing that I-24 has actually talked about. And this is a very important message here for anyone with a comprehension of exactly what is all about, to understand what exactly this war in particular was about and is about still. So there, there is no... It's just literally straightforward. It's all about what they want to achieve from within Gaza. So I'll just show you the next video as well from Reuters. Have a look, um, see what she says. And yeah, we'll get back to you in a minute. You probably wouldn't know it, but Gaza is rich, the gas rich, at least 1.4 trillion cubic feet rich to be precise. But there's a catch. Geologists and natural resources economists have confirmed that the occupied Palestinian territory lies above sizable reservoirs of oil and natural gas wealth in Area C of the occupied West Bank and the Mediterranean coast off the Gaza Strip. To date, the real and opportunity costs of the occupation exclusively in the area of oil and natural gas have accumulated to tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars. Back in 1999, the Palestinian authorities signed a deal with British Gas. Just off the Gaza coast, they struck it lucky. And two wells were drilled. That's Gaza Marine 1 and 2. It was a multi-billion dollar gift from God. An economic boon, both home and abroad. This is one of the key messages here today. There will be gas available for export. And from my conversations with Palestinian officials, including President Arafat, it is clear that they have no interest in just sitting on a gas surplus. Fast forward to 2007, Hamas comes to power and Israel launches an offensive on the Gaza Strip, leaving behind 1,400 dead Palestinians, but taking with it the gas fields. Now, within the year, Israel announced the discovery of the Leviathan natural gas field, which did include Gaza's riches, all in all valued at $453 billion. Now, since then, Gazans haven't seen a shekel, or to be more accurate, they have been denied around $47 billion in revenue. As for Tel Aviv, well, it's gunning to become a new hub. This is a historical moment in which the small country of Israel becomes a significant player in the global energy market. The Memorandum of Understanding will enable Israel, for the first time, to export Israeli natural gas to Europe. And it is even more impressive looking at the significant set of agreements we signed over the last year, which position Israel and the Israeli energy and water sectors as a key global player. Let's just run through this then. At that moment in time, so we're talking 2022, Russian oil and gas were sanctioned. Iranian oil was sanctioned. Syrian oil fields were, and still are, illegally occupied by US forces. Now, the key port of Latakia was being bombed by Israel. And the port of Beirut, the, the gateway to the Middle East, 
lay in ruins. Enter this small country of Israel right here with its seas of gas, its working ports, an answer to Europe's problems and perhaps most critically, the U.S. blessing. Because in case you didn't know, U.S. Congress has decided that Israeli energy is in the highest national security interests of Washington. So D.C. was only too happy for Tel Aviv to become a key global player. After all, it had itself previously mulled over ways in which to make its 51st state a window onto Europe. Another interesting application of nuclear excavation would be a sea-level canal 160 miles long across Israel connecting the Mediterranean with the Gulf of Aqaba and thus the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. Such a canal would be a strategically valuable alternate to the present Suez Canal. The Suez Canal is a gold mine. It connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean via the Red Sea. It is the link between Asia and Europe. Every day, almost 3 million barrels of oil, 8% of global energy, 50 ships, $9 billion worth of cargo, 12% of global trade all pass along this right here single canal. Remember in 2021 how a container ship ran aground in the Suez? Global trade was brought to its knees. The alternative route via the Cape of Good Hope adds around nine days and 7,000 kilometers to the journey. There is no replacement for the Suez Canal, except perhaps for the Ben Gurion Canal. Now, what the U.S. had been thinking about back in the 60s was dropping 520 nukes on parts of Israel, all to build a 260 kilometer long canal that would start at the Red Sea down there in the port city of Eilat, run through the Negev Desert and pour out into the Mediterranean. Where exactly? Right next to northern Gaza, the same northern Gaza that is currently being bombarded and depopulated. Egypt and its money-making Suez Canal would just be sidelined. The same Egypt that, rumour has it, is now considering taking in refugees in exchange for debt relief by the US. And if you think it's, it's crude of me to talk business during times of an existential war, think again. The winning companies have committed to unprecedented investment in natural gas exploration over the next three years, which would hopefully result in the discovery of new natural gas reservoirs. In recent weeks, Tel Aviv has handed out 12 new licenses to six companies, on top of the plan to tap more of the Gaza marine resources. This area is a strategic gold mine. The Israelis have their largest foreign base down the Red Sea, just off Eritrea. And here, a bit further down, well, Beijing has a naval base in Djibouti, a key piece in its enormous global infrastructure project, the Belt and Road, hated by London, Brussels and Washington alike. Always ask yourself, qui bono, who benefits? Because war is horror and war is hell. But never forget that war, above all else, is big business. As you've seen, um, this is all about literal definition of a total, complete annihilation, nothing else. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Comment, share the videos and like the videos. I will look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care.